Hello and welcome to part three of an indefinite number of series in Summer Reads a Romance Novel. Today, as opposed to just reading the descriptions of the back of Captive Heart and all of the summaries at the end, I'm going to dig deep and read a love passage. Now for a little context of this scene, from what I've gathered from really minimally skimming the preceding pages, <coughs> Mylan <laughs> and his new bride, Selesi, haven't really been getting along. Um, I guess it was some arranged marriage and... You know, she's not subservient enough, I suppose, and he just is a dick. So, <clears throat> we're gonna read a passage in which they share their tender bodies. Let's begin. Mylan was in no mood to ask for the loving he felt was rightfully his typical man. And he carried Selesi swiftly to his bed, allowing her no more than a second to catch her breath before he'd lay her down beside... <laughs> before he lay down beside her and drew her into his arms. His kisses were wild, demanding the ready response he knew her life body capable of giving. But she placed her hands on his chest in a vain effort to push him away. Spring went dark. What did you think would happen this afternoon when you bathed in the stream without the slightest display of modesty? Do you think I am devoid of all emotion except anger? What did you hope to catch, if not me? Giving her no time to respond, Mylan again lowered his mouth to hers, but this time his kiss was teasing his lips playfully caressing hers until she was gradually relaxed and lay calmly in his arms. Well, why did you make such a show of inviting my affections if you did not want them? As Selesi stared up into his golden eyes, their bright sheen reflected the glowing embers upon the hearth with a taunting fire, and she could no longer keep her desires hidden. I do want you, Mylan, desperately, but I still want to be your wife. I want to be your beloved companion, not a slave who must forever bow to her master's will. Oh, too sensible. <clears throat> Probably not the right choice in man, but, you know, we'll save that for another video. Mylan raised his fingertips to her cheek, studying her delicate features with a rapt glance before he replied, What difference does it make what I call you, when either way you will always be mine? He'd had enough of her endless defiance, and said no more as he leaned down to deepen his kiss. He needed her love too badly to argue over the circumstances that brought them together. He just wanted to fuck. Who cares? She might, she might belong to him, but he was a captive of the passion he could neither deny nor control. He needed all she could give. Her lively spirit, her enchanting glance, and best of all, her tender affection, which she had given before in such abundance. Wife, mistress, slave. The words rang in his mind with a senseless clatter. She was simply his, and no word could describe the joy of the sweetness of her surrender gave him. He gathered up the hem of her oversized dress to slip it gently over her head so he might caress all of her splendid figure without the barrier of the rough fabric to hinder his pleasure as well as hers. Her skin was glowing with the same 
deep blush that filled her cheeks, and he let his lips trace her gentle curves with slow kisses that teased the pale pink tips of her full breasts to rosy peaks. He had no gift for poetry, for the beauty of words to make her understand how deeply he'd come to care for her, but his affection was in his every gesture, and he vowed to himself <laughs> that that would have to be enough. <clears throat> <sighs> Silesia laced her fingers in Mylan's soft curls to draw him near to her heart, for she'd not dare hope he would treat her again so sweetly, and she enjoyed the tenderness of his touch greatly. He was again making love to her, as he had on the night they were wed, with an irresistible passion that filled her whole being with a deep longing to have more of his enticing affection, and she slipped her hands under his soft, suede shirt to help him remove it more swiftly. His scars made his body unique, but no less dear, as she leaned across him, letting her curls tickle the taut muscles of his stomach as her tongue traced the pattern of deep slashes that marred the smooth skin of his chest. She loved all of him so dearly, the scars as well as the perfection of his lean physique, and her lips traveled over his warm bronze skin, gently conveying the adoration she dared not speak. Mylan's breath quickened to hoarse gasps as he tried to do more, to do no more than enjoy Silesi's delightful affection, but she had driven him past the grasp of reason, and he felt only the overwhelming need to finish what he'd begun when he'd first placed her upon the deep mound of furs that served as his bed. He tried to catch her, to encircle her narrow waist to hold her still, finally pulling her down upon him to press her slender hips to his as he rolled over, slowly pushing her down among the tangle of lush furs where he could use all his strength to pin her beneath him in a loving embrace. He held her tightly, winding his fingers in her long curls to capture her smiling lips beneath her own, beneath his own. Lots of curly hair here. <clears throat> she moved against him, her rhythm far more gentle than his, luring him with a seductive grace ever deeper into the warm, sweet secrets of her vibrant body until his pleasure was near pain, and he could no longer wait to bring their passion for each other to the height of ecstasy. He buried his face against the soft curve of her throat, savoring the feel of her lovely body beneath his own until he could feel the rapture that thundered through his body shudder through hers. He had not counted the times they'd made love, but knew but knew they had been far too few when it was the most wondrous of pastimes to share. She was like no other beautiful woman he'd ever known, of course. <clears throat> Not teasing and flirtatious, nor haughty or aloof, but so giving that he was drunk with the wine of her kisses as he lay filled with the contentment as he, pl as he pressed her close to enjoy the feel of her silken skin against his own far more rugged flesh. I think nine minutes is about enough, but I'll continue this in part four.